and transforming cities with regard to economic development finance have developed financing mechanisms for their economic development strategies that emphasize fully engaged public-private sector partnerships and a relatively higher degree of leveraging private investment with limited public funds and often include a higher degree of philanthropic support. Now, many of us who heard the folks from Pittsburgh, they referenced clearly that they had had untold amount of philanthropic support. We've got to be more aggressive in going after that. And then finally, this case study suggests that with regard to leadership, that resurgent and transforming the cities appear to have a cadre of leadership that work together to effectively marshal resources necessary to implement an articulated, shared vision and strategy for their community's well-being. Don't take my word for it. I know everybody in here has a computer, and you can go home and Google the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, because it's a 50-page document that speaks to industrial city strategies, and I would commend it to all of them. I hope that there can be replication of some other things that occurred during this 18 months. At our last symposium, for instance, we had a presentation by the Michigan Municipal League. Dan Gilmartin was the keynote speaker. He was asked, and the Bible that I read says, ask and ye shall receive. He was asked if the Michigan Municipal League would give the city of Pontiac a free membership. Wasn't he leader? By Ken Glass. And he said yes. Now there's a value to that. That's a fifteen thousand dollar value. It means that the council can now go to workshops for free. They have to. They're going to stay overnight. They have to pay their own room and board. But with regard to training opportunities that have been foreclosed, that same opportunity is open to members of the Charter Revision Commission, to any elected and appointed bodies. I think we're about to be a little better and a little more vigorous in asking and praying that God guide us to do His will here on earth, here in Pontiac. It's been a great honor. It's been a great privilege. Thank you. If you notice, in this uh, uh, room here today, there's some people very similar to those you have seen at the many successful symposium that were held. That's no accident. Pontiac has been blessed that Gary Rusty appointed and designated specifically one Dr. Jeffrey Breeder to represent Oakland University as his representative to the Sesquicentennial Commission. Yeah. It, has been, it has been an extraordinary joy to work with this indefatigable individual known as Dr. Jeffrey Breeder. He's my older brother now, I call him my older brother. But he rides, he walks, he just, he gets up early, he's always thinking, and he has been a linchpin that nobody will forget in this city. Dr. Breger. Good evening, and first of all, I want to make sure I am having a good time. Yeah. This is a party, and we have decided to limit the speeches as much as possible. And Hubert, my partner in crime, has absolutely restricted himself. <laughs> so, so please give him a hand. Now, 
in the interest of keeping my remarks short, I'm also going to look at my notes and try to stick to them as much as possible so that uh, I will not take up extra time. Uh, today, we are celebrating the successful conclusion of Pontiac's sesquicentennial year. On the city's 150th birthday, we should not forget, however, that the city was actually founded as a village in 1819, and so we'll be celebrating the 200th birthday, actually, of the uh, village and city of Pontiac in uh, just seven years. Now, because I uh, volunteer once a week at the Oakland County Pioneer Historical Society, you'll excuse me if I introduce a little bit of history, but it has it's right in line with the concept of honoring the past. So, um, the city has had its ups and downs during all that time. Did you know that it burned down in 1844? And except for this very building, the Crowfoot, in which you are today, uh, the city had to be entirely redone. The pioneers got together, and they did it. Uh, incidentally, we also want to mention uh, our appreciation to Blair McGowan for giving us this nice venue to uh, carry out the celebration. Now, the next thing was not a disaster, but it was disagreeable. Uh, already in the 1860s, the Clinton River, meandering through our fair city, uh, became an open sewer with a cow or so dead, usually, floating down the river. Well, again, the city stepped up, uh, passed ordinances, and prevented that, and as you know, eventually put the whole thing on the ground. 